In this video, I'm going to attempt to explain one way, there are more ways obviously, how a strong enough wind can actually remove your roof or lift it off and separate it from the structure. Now, for example, if you have strong enough winds, and again, doesn't have to doesn't have to be a 90 degree angle and doesn't doesn't need to be 200 mile an hour winds. You know, if the wind is at a particular angle, you know, one angle I'm sure is going to affect the building more than another angle. And so I'm not I just don't want to say this has got to be a 90 degree angle here, but I'm going to use this example to give you a better idea. Let's just say that your wind is hitting the face of a wall or the wind uh, and it has no place to go where is it going to go down up to the side okay some of it is actually going to go up and the wind that actually goes up is going to put a tremendous amount of pressure depending upon the speed of the wind and the angle of the wind on the roof um, overhangs. Now if you don't have a roof overhang, obviously this isn't going to apply to you. But these roof overhangs can trap a considerable amount of wind creating enormous amounts of pressure on the connection points for the roof framing and how it actually connects to the walls. Now here's an example of one of the spots it can separate. It can separate where the wall studs actually connect to the top plate. Now think about it. The nails in, in most cases are going to be vertical. They're not going to be toe nailed. And it is really easy to separate here. This is an extraordinarily weak spot. Um, here's another weak spot that would be between the plates themselves. But I don't consider this to be the weakest spot um, because most of the time the plates are nailed together pretty good. However, the nails, let's not forget, are going to be vertical, running in the same direction as the nails that are connecting the wall framing studs to the top plate. So this, if there's enough pressure, this could actually be a weak spot. I just don't think it's going to be as weak as the one previously mentioned. Next up on the list is the all-time winner. This is where it separates most often if there is a strong enough wind to put enough pressure on these roof overhangs. And that, of course, will be where the rafters or the roof trusses actually connect to the top plates. Now, here's one of the things you really can't see in the video. But if you have siding, plywood siding, lap siding, um, or drywall on the inside, a lot of times this will actually provide you with um, another connecting point to connect the plates to the wall stud. So if you could imagine um, uh, the outside perimeter of this building um, with a layer of shear panel around it, um, plywood, and the plywood would actually be connecting the top plates um, to the wall framing studs, then you're going to have a pretty good connection here. However, if you don't have any building hardware installed on the to connect the trusses or the rafters to the plates, like hurricane ties, H2s, for example, or H2.5s, then you're actually this is going to be the weakest spot of the building. So I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, feel free to uh, leave a comment in the comment area what you're not understanding. I'll try and make another video. One more thing I'd like to point out. Let's not forget that this is a video about how strong winds can actually lift the roofs off of a building. This is not a video to provide you with information on how to reduce or eliminate this. Um, so let's not get carried away. Sometimes, I mean, recently I've been getting a lot of comments um, from viewers about why didn't I provide this, I, or this information or that information? Well, that's because that's not what the video was about. This video is just to provide you with information um, that has already been previously stated, not, <clears throat> you know, how to um, reduce the risk or eliminate it entirely. So hopefully by now you get a better idea of just how roof overhangs 
can actually create problems for a building um, instead of uh, benefiting it. Now let's not forget roof overhangs are designed for a variety of different reasons. So before you go and eliminate these roof overhangs, you should find out what those reasons are. One of those would be the fact that uh, it shades the home um, during certain times of the year and then allows more sunlight in at other times of the year. And then another, of course, would be the water that rolls off while it's raining or snowing. This water can actually um, roll away from the building. You know, you got a two foot overhang, then you've got a good chance if the wind's not blowing of the water rolling off of the building. You know, if you don't have any gutters onto the ground and it's got put a little farther away from the foundation, it's not going to be splashing up against the wall. So there are some benefits. But of course, if you live in a high wind area, tornadoes and hurricanes, you might want to think about whether or not you want to put an overhang on when you're designing a building in those areas.